The European Central Bank out with its latest interest rate decision. Steve Leisman joins us now. Uh, and for once, this, this, this is really going to be interesting, Steve. What's up? First time in 11 years, Joe, the European Central Bank raising its uh, interest rate. Uh, the interest rate of main refinancing on marginal lending will be increased to 0 0.5. So it, it looks like they did a 50 here, uh, Joe. That's my... Uh, uh, that's my uh, uh, initial take on this. Uh, and I don't know here. He's decided to raise three interest rates by 50 basis points and approve transmission uh, the transmission protection instrument, which is an instrument that is designed to make it so that there is not such huge gaps between uh, the uh, bond yields in different countries. Italy, for example, was trading at like 240 over the uh, or 230 over the uh, German spread. I'm trying to see if there's any change at all. It came down a little bit. It looks to me, Joe, if I have this right, and somebody in the control room whisper in my ear if I have it wrong, this is the more aggressive uh, take that was kind of signaled, very much like the Fed. Just a couple days ago, a piece came out suggesting that they could go, instead of 25, they would go 50. And that looks to be what they did here, uh, Joe. So uh, just a couple uh, uh, days before, they had done a lot of uh, uh, signaling uh, in the June meeting that it would be 25. And then they got a, a hotter than expected inflation report. And here they are doing a, a 50. It is 50. Thank you very much in the back room there. Um, I, I had been uh, dissuaded a little bit from that from some folks I've been talking to, thinking maybe it was a minority. But there they go doing 50 and getting aggressive. Of course, they're way behind the Federal Reserve. Um, and it would be interesting that I can actually look at this to call up the uh, the euro and see if that's gotten any yeah, it has strengthened a little bit. It was 101.7. Now it's 102. So the, the currency market was a bit surprised by this uh, to, to see there, there's the euro uh, spiking a little bit on the more aggressive move. And now we await uh, two things. One is how they'll implement this uh, program to even out interest rates across the euro uh, area. And then the second thing is what kind of guidance we get. Uh, I think for sure now you have to think about a more aggressive European Central yeah. Bank joining others like Canada, uh, Great Britain, and, hey, and the Steve, United States, Becky. They, they also say they <clears> see <throat> further normalization of interest rates. So this is not the end of the rate hikes, that they're going to continue no. with this. Tough choices, Steve, yep. over, over mm -hmm. there. And, and like the, the same kind of choices sometimes that, that central bankers everywhere uh, face. They, they wanted to keep them low. They, you know, obviously, they've got energy issues that are going to impact global growth. Now, this, this is just adding to... Uh, to the slowdown, you would think. And uh, the stress on the consumer. Stress on the consumer. Too. Yeah. And, if, and if, the anti-fragmentation uh, anti mandate uh, is taking a back seat, obviously, at this point to, to what needs to be done. Just like we need, we, we're we doing things over here that need to be done at the expense of maybe employment and everything else. Uh, tough choices when, when you've stayed easy for too long for the wrong reason. Well, no, no doubt about that. I mean, that the, the European Central Bank is a single inflation mandate central bank. That's all they're supposed to deal with. Uh, and so they don't really have to worry so much about it. But it still is true. Uh, they have problems over there we don't necessarily have. They have a huge potential natural gas problem, given uh, what may or may not happen with Russian supply over there. They have a huge spike. And, 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 and the impact of that natural gas issue or the broader energy issue in Europe is one that will definitively raise prices, but also could mean a massive uh, downturn in European industrial production, especially in Germany, if they don't have the energy or have to pay huge amounts of, 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 uh, uh, to pay for that energy. So they have issues over there that, that we don't have right here. Plus, we, you know, we have our own energy sources. Um, and then they have this fragmentation. I'm glad you said that, Joe, anti-fragmentation. I was trying to, uh, as we say in the business, write around that uh, uh, phrase. And what that means is these huge disparities out there. I'll give you a quick uh, uh, look at what the disparities are. I have a little chart in front of me here. Um, the Italian 10-year trades at 235 or 2.35 percentage points higher than German, uh, Germany. Uh, Greece actually is even is lower now at 222 over. The, the Greek 2-year is, is uh, a full percentage point over the German 2-year. So that would be like if people in Montana were paying a percentage point more than people in Pennsylvania for their uh, uh, bond deals. We don't have that problem again here in the United States. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.